Luang Prabang was very relaxed. There was not that many people there. There was little coffee shops, cafes. Hanoi was totally different. We flew in and immediately you were just like absorbed into this chaotic um, traffic mess. But um, yeah, we were staying in the old quarter and there was this little like alleyway where every morning we would walk out and there'd be like people with vegetables and fish and all kinds of food like laid out on the street. Yeah, then we came to Kappa Island, which in all honesty was a pretty easy trip. But um, we got to Kappa Town and then the nightmare arrived where we realized it was Saturday and there was no place available in the entire town. And so we ended up here at this little like tent village outside of town. There were these other Germans around our bus and they were standing at one of the guest houses and they were like, this is the only other option. So we just kind of ended up coming with them. kayaking trip through Lanha Bay and saw some insanely large jellyfish. And luckily the tide was high enough for us to go deep water soloing. Well, the rest of our trip to Cap Island was really fun, and we found that really the best way to get around from everywhere was to get a motorbike. And for the last few weeks, we've seen so many people in Southeast Asia with band-aids and horrible bruises, and they've all been from motorbike accidents. So we've kind of been trying to avoid it as much as we could, but finally we gave in and we did rent the motorbike to get around Cap Island. And we're really glad we did because the trip was just spectacular. I mean, the scenery there, the rolling hills, and just the ease of getting everywhere was um, awesome to have a motorbike. And we, uh, first we went to Kappa National Park and we did a hike there up to this really interesting lookout point and you just got a chance to view everything from this um, really cool vantage point. Uh, we did some bird watching there, some medita meditation, and um, yeah, the hike wasn't too long, it was about maybe three, four hours, but it was kind of like a test run with us with um, the motorbike. The next day we got up and we loaded our climbing gear onto the bike and we went to Butterfly Valley. And um, we weren't really sure what to expect. We knew it was a little bit outside of town, but once we got there we parked the bike and we were able to climb for a few hours there. The climbs were really long, probably about 25 to almost 30 meters. It took of our entire rope, but uh, yeah, the climbing was spectacular there. There was water buffaloes, there was people farming as you look down into the valley and that was really cool. Um, but yeah, we spent two days climbing Butterfly Valley and uh, really enjoyed just um, the whole environment of Kappa Island, it was really fun. Um, 
kept, but we talked to some people and they're like, Hoi An's wonderful, and we looked it up, and it's actually you fly into Da Nang, which is where Grandpa flew during um, the Vietnam War, and so I was really intrigued to come to Da Nang and see Da Nang just because Grandpa had been here. And I'd asked him once many years ago when I was telling him that I love to travel, like where where are the top three places I have to go in the world, Grandpa? Like what are the most beautiful places you've ever seen? And he said, breaking through the clouds um, in Vietnam was the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. And so he he said once, you know, even through the eyes of war, Vietnam was beautiful. And he was absolutely right. Um, it's just ironic that he was here fighting a war and I'm here now vacationing. It's just kind of surreal to think about, you know, like I'm in a pool floating in a flotation device, you know, riding around on a bike and he was flying helicopters and saving people's lives and um, it's just crazy how the world works like that. We're staying at a place called Christina's, which was recommended to us by another group of travelers when we were in Katba. And it's amazing. For $35, we have a balcony, we have a huge king bed, we have a beautiful rain shower, there are windows on all the sides of the room, and it's spectacular here. The breakfast is um, included in the cost, and we get omelets, and we get fresh juices, and the staff here is unbelievably nice. We get free use of bikes. Um, so recently we've been biking all over town. We were supposed to stay for three days, and we've been here a week, so if that gives you any kind of inclination of how much we like it here. but. We feel very safe and relaxed and it's given us a chance to kind of get into a routine where we go and we find the post office and that's always one of our favorite things to do and we bike into town and we find a local Indian restaurant which we love to eat at. Every city we've gone to we found an Indian restaurant in. Um, we also find a gym and work out with the locals. We were at this gym, um, just kind of like a garage, open air, and we were lifting and I was the only girl there, and I couldn't tell if this was horribly offensive or not to all the guys, because as I lifted and I like went to one part of the gym, like everyone kind of went away from me. Coming to Hoi An, I think, was a really great idea, because it is so much different than what Hanoi was like, and it is complete opposite of what Cap Island is like. But I think the reason I like Hoi An so much is because originally this was never on the list of the places that we plan on coming to. And I found that throughout this trip, a lot of the things I've enjoyed the most are the things that were spontaneous or planned last minute. So yesterday we went on a little venture to the city north of Da Nang called Hue, and it's a two to three hour train ride, and it was spectacularly beautiful. We were completely shocked at how beautiful it was. was not prepared for it. With five minutes to spare, we bought this last minute ticket. She was like, the only thing open is a berth, um, a sleeper car. And so we're like, oh, I don't, usually when you talk about a sleeper bus, you have about this much room and you have to lay. And I was like, I don't want to lay for three hours, but if it's our only option, sure, let's go. They had 11 cars on it and we had a ticket that said we were the 12th car. And so us and a group of people are just standing there kind of on this train platform waiting and then they just bring in a bunch of other cars, they attach it, and then we got on and we have this own private berth, which is just beautiful. And I don't know, I was expected to be crammed next to a bunch of people and it was totally not the case. We got on, we're the last people to get on, and we go and it's like we have five and six. So we walk down the corridor, we find it, and it is a beautiful sleeper car. I mean, you could sit in it, it had pillows, like a really nice pillow and nice sheets on it, it had a sitting table area. Um, a huge picture window, and we were the only two in it. Nobody else had the top bunks. So that was a wonderful surprise. The Reunification Express. That's what I think it's called, at least. That's what it says on the website. The website has been off in every single aspect of this ride, in terms of price, in terms of timing, in terms of how many seats are available here. So I don't really know what to believe anymore with the trains. As we headed north um, on the train, up the way. It was so pristine and untouched and I know that if it existed in the U.S. people would have started putting real estate on it or buying it or something, but it was very um, rustic and very natural all the way up the coast, which was nice to see. Um, 
took the train up to Wei, which is actually right near um, Quang Tri. And that's actually where he flew out of as well. It's right on the border where South Vietnam met North Vietnam. So it's kind of an interesting historical place. And we meditated there in the middle of this garden um, in the imperial city in Wei. And I came to the realization that everything, every place we visited has been an empire that has crumbled. Every place, every castle, every um, you know, imperial palace we visit is the skeleton of what remains of a once great society. And it's just a reminder that everything crumbles, even in life, you know, um, we all have to die at some point. And so just appreciate the time you do have, but all, all empires do fall eventually. Mm -hmm.